Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel where today we are going to be doing another recent reads very quickly after the last one because I have been reading so much lately. It's been very lovely because I really felt for quite a while that I didn't have any time to read and so now I'm kind of making up for it. But to jump right in, the very first thing that I am going to talk about is Steel's Edge by Alona Andrews. This is the fourth book in the Edge series, which is an adult paranormal romance kind of series. It does lean pretty heavily into urban fantasy, but ultimately it is a romance. But in these books, in the Edge books, there is basically a magic realm that pretty much looks exactly like our world but it has magic. And there's also actually our normal realm without magic. And then there's this weird little space in between called the edge. And it has some magic, but not a lot. And then, and there's a, that's kind of where a lot of like outcasts and outlaws kind of end up. And in this particular book, we're following our main leads of Richard and Charlotte. Richard is originally from the edge and has a beef with the slavers that are in both the weird and the edge. And he's decided that he's just going to take them out. And then you have Charlotte, who is a healer and in the very beginning of the book has some issues, which leads her to leave her home until she gets to the edge and she's taken in by a local. But that local is actually killed by the slavers and so Charlotte decides to also go after the slavers and it's the same ones that Richard is going after and sparks fly. And here's what I will say is that ultimately I really did enjoy this book. I really like Richard and Charlotte as our main characters. They're both kind of stiff and proper but know how to make a joke and they tend to do that with each other but it's it's kind of, you know, hidden, more hidden kind of jokes. They're not as overt as some of the other characters we've gotten in this series. I really love this idea of like, they're trying to go after the slavers and, and they're trying to focus on their mission, but also they're very much distracted by each other. I just genuinely really like that. Um, and so like, the romance I really, really enjoyed. And I think that the actual, like, that non-romantic plot is pretty good as well overall. Um, however, all of the books in the Edge series suffer from a problem where basically, like, okay, so when you write a book, there's a, like, there's a lot of structures you can go with, but a really common one is where you're kind of, like, going up and then you hit a point where like there's a problem and you kind of need to figure out how to get around the problem, change direction, whatever, and then you can kind of keep on going on to the climax, to the solution, to the problem, whatever. Um, and the problem with these books is when we get to that first problem, that setback that's going to change their direction and what they're doing there's so much buildup that it feels like it should be the climax of the book, but it's happening in the middle. So it's really strange feeling because like it genuinely feels like it should be the end of the book, but also like the romance hasn't really kicked in and what are we doing here? So that was one of those things where like in this, it was worse, the worst in the second book, it got a little better in the third and it is a little bit better in here as well. It's it's present, but not nearly as bad. It's a very interesting problem though. So like I was okay. Cause I remembered enough of the plot to be able to get through it. My buddy had much more of a problem because this was her first time reading it. Whereas this is a reread for me. So yeah, not great. Um, I will also say that I think that this book and the third book in this series, um, there's, not, there's the romantic plot, there's the non-romantic main plot, and then there's a B plot with Jack and George, which are two of the kids that we meet in the first book. That's a lot to balance and they don't totally get it right. And that's why I said this does lean into urban fantasy. 
it's still very much a romance, but it leans more heavily into urban fantasy than a lot of romances tend to do. So, like, I knew a lot of that going in because, again, I've read it before. And overall, I do think that this is still a pretty strong book. I very much enjoyed it, and I ended up giving it four and a half stars. And then I picked up You Just Need to Lose Weight and 19 Other Myths About Fat People by Aubrey Gordon. This is adult nonfiction, and it is exactly as it says. It's just tackling a bunch of different myths about fat people and anti-fat bias and really pulling together the research to debunk those myths. I listened to this on audio. It is read by Aubrey Gordon herself, and I think that that was the right choice for me. Okay, actually, there were two things that really made this experience very good. First is that I listened to it on audio with Aubrey Gordon narrating. I listened to Aubrey Gordon's podcast, Maintenance Phase. It is hands down one of my favorite podcasts, and so it felt very comforting to have her read this book to me. But the other thing that really, really helped is that I had really good expectations going in about how much I was going to learn in that I wasn't expecting to learn really anything at all um, because I figured that a lot of it would have been covered from the podcast and I was correct. However, I do think that this is a worthwhile project separate from the podcast because what it does is like I said, it takes a myth. So for example, you just need to lose weight, calories in, calories out. And it pulls all the research that I recognize from various podcast episodes, and it puts together a really nice, basically little essay about why that is not a worthwhile thing to say. It completely debunks the myth and it shows the research and it's just really nice. And each chapter is discrete. So you don't need to read any of the other chapters to understand the one that you are currently reading. And you don't need to read them in any particular order either, which is really, really nice. And so if you just want to be able to either for yourself have those myths debunked or you want to talk to somebody else, it's all right there in a very nice, neat package. And I think it's just generally really well done, really well written. And I really appreciate that there was another myth thrown in at the end, which I did not expect to see because it's not something that she's really talked about in her podcast, but it was perfect. It was like the perfect little touch at the end. So I really, really enjoy this. I think that again, it's a worthwhile read. Um, and I ended up giving it four and a half stars. And then I picked up The Last Witness by K.J. Parker. And this is an adult speculative kind of novella. And I think it might actually be set like way in the future, but I'm not sure. Um, but we're following our main character who I don't think has a name. I don't know. I've listened to this on audio and... I don't think that his name was ever actually mentioned, but basically what he can do is he can look at a person and like go inside their mind and find specific memories and take them out. And when he does that, he ends up with the memories and it is so completely gone for you that you don't even realize that there is a memory missing. Um, and so of course, like <laughs> he ends up falling in with some nefarious criminal kind of types and things go downhill very quickly. Um, I DNF'd this. <laughs> I DNF'd this 30% in and not because it's bad, but because it's so, so not for me. So I picked this up and about 10% in, I realized I don't actually think this is for me, but I kept listening because like I was already listening and I just went with the momentum and maybe it would get better, but I had to stop at 30% for, I don't even know why I had to stop, but I walked away from it and I never wanted to pick it back up. I was just like, like actively thinking about it being like, I just, I would rather listen to a podcast. I'd rather start a new book on audio than pick this one up. And again, it's not because it's bad, but it's just because it's really not for me. Our main character is morally gray and motivated by money in a way that I was just like, 
ah, I don't find this terribly interesting, right? Like, I'm not hugely into morally gray characters anyway, but especially this where I just don't find it interesting. He's also an unreliable narrator to an extent because we find out that he has perfect recall of all of these memories, but he cannot remember which ones are his and which ones are other people's. And so it creates this really fascinating thing where he's trying to tell a story from his childhood, but then he realizes he doesn't actually know if that's from his childhood or not. So I think that that's a really lovely touch, but like, I'm not super into unreliable narrators. So it was a nice touch for somebody else. Um, and then also it's told kind of non-linearly, similar to like where you're talking to somebody and they get to a point in their story and they realize they forgot to tell you something, so they have to backtrack and tell... It's told a little bit like that, not terrible, but I'm, again, that's just not the kind of thing that I generally enjoy. And so altogether, I was just like, I, I'm not interested in this. Like I haven't been pulled in. I can see why other people might like it, but it's just not for me. And so I went ahead and DNF'd it. And then I picked up Written and Read by Anne Bishop, the first book in the Others series, which is an adult urban fantasy series. And it's really interesting because it posits this idea that before the humans were here, there were the Others or the Terra Indigene. And basically, like, their forms have evolved over many, many, many years into something that looks kind of like what we, the reader, would think of as a werewolf or a vampire or a lot of other kinds of things too. Enter our main character who is Meg Corbin and she is actually a blood prophet that is on the run from the people that would use her gift for their own profit. And she stumbles into the lakeside courtyard and the courtyard is kind of like the demarcation zone between the human land and the other's land. And she ends up with a job as a liaison, accepting deliveries from the humans for the others. Um, but things get, you know, things start happening really quickly. And the story goes from there. This is a reread. This is one of my favorite books. I've read it probably I, over 10 times. I This is one of my favorite books, hands down, in a really great series. So um, the things that I like the most about this series and this book in particular, what, the first one is the world building. If you've read a lot of urban fantasy like I have, this feels different than a lot of what we get in a really, really nice way. I wouldn't say that it's like super amazing world building, but it's good. And the implications are well thought out. So like, for example, our characters that we meet that are the others, like it feels like Anne Bishop actually thought about what the implications would be to have an apex predator that is above humans and that they have these, they've taken on some amount of like animal instinct from the things that they shift into. And so like, what would that actually look like? And that characterization holds together with the world building in a way that a lot of urban fantasies just don't quite manage. And it's great. I think that that part of it is so like the fact that it's different and that it holds together in a really nice way is something that I absolutely adore. I also really like our main character of Meg. She is just genuine, genuinely an endearing character as she is trying to learn how to live an independent life. Um, I, I just, and she just kind of pulls together and is like forming this little found family and it's delightful. Um, she also, she is not autistic, but she definitely has some characteristics that would line up with an autistic person. And that's kind of really nice to see in a character as well. Um, and the plot itself, I think, is pretty good and is also a, just a generally a really nice setup for the rest of the series. So yes, I love this. Um, a note about content warnings, because, um, you know, I really want to make sure <laughs> that I touch on that because I don't always remember to. There are two major content warnings and one kind of minor content warning. Um, the first one 
the first major one is violence and gore because we're dealing with a lot of people that have more animal instincts. And so if you're kind of yicked out by the things that like animals do in the wild, this probably won't work for you. The second major content warning is self-harm. Meg is a blood prophet. You cut her skin to get the prophecy. And so, and it's not, it's definitely not self-harm in the same way that we kind of think about that, but it is cutting the skin and how it kind of plays out in this world. There are definitely mirror, it's, it's definitely mirroring like the experience of being addicted to cutting yourself to that kind of self-harm. So I think that it does it in a really good way, but I think that it could definitely, if that's something that you're sensitive to, that could be, it, this could be quite a lot actually. So just be cautious. And then I will say that in passing, there is allusions to the fact that blood prophets and potentially Meg herself have been sexually assaulted. It is one small paragraph in passing. It is something that is also revisited later in the series, not in any kind of major depth, but like, again, if that's something you're really sensitive to, it is at least mentioned in this book. So just be aware. But like I said, this is one of my favorite books. Um, so it was an absolute joy to reread it and I ended up giving it five stars. And then real quick, because I just realized that I forgot to mention one content warning, major content warning for this, and that is infertility. It's one of the very first things that Charlotte is dealing with is infertility. So there you go. And then, um, one last thing to mention, uh, mostly because I talked about it in my TBR, um, but I didn't get very far before I decided to put it back down, but that is Comet Madness by Richard J. Goodrich. I got six or seven pages into this, and the writing style definitely just was not working for me. It was a little bit lyrical, a little bit flowery, um, which I struggle with even in fiction, but in nonfiction, it's it's really, really difficult for me to deal with. So, I, I mean, I made it, like, I, I did read, like, six or seven pages, and I was just like, I just can't see me doing this for the whole book and enjoying it. So I went ahead and just put it back down. Um, so that is it. Those are the things that I have attempted since the last video. As a little preview as to what is coming next, I am in the middle of two different books. The first one is Wintertide by Ruthanna Emrys, and the other one is The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal. So I don't know which, which if, I will probably finish at least one of these, if not both of them, for the next video, but I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But that is it. So if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of the things that I mentioned in this video, please leave me a comment down below. But that is it. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. And until next time, have happy reading and I will see you in my next video. Bye!